Good evening. This is Pastor Dominique from Evander Revival Center. Welcome to my live broadcast on a Thursday night where I share a thought from God's Word that I know is going to have impact in your faith today. As you come in online or if you're watching at a later stage, would you just leave a comment? If you need any prayer, please send us a message in our inbox and we would love to pray for you. We would love to intercede for you. But tonight I want to go into the Word of God and I am so excited for the Word of God tonight. I'm telling you there is so much revelation in the Word of God, the Word that I'm going to share. So I want you to open up your heart, be receptive towards the Word of God. I know it's going to have impact in your life. Let us go tonight to the book of Genesis and I'm going to be reading from chapter 32. And I'm just going to read a couple of verses and then I want to speak about a very specific character in the Bible. Now, this character is my favorite character in all of Scripture, and in a couple of moments you'll see why. But let's go to Genesis chapter 32, and I'm going to be reading from verse 22 down to verse 32. And listen to what the Bible says. And Jacob arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of the Yabok. He took them and sent them over the brook and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone. And a man came and wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And, and this man said to Jacob, let me go for day breaks. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Verse 27. So the man said to Jacob, what is your name? And Jacob replied, Jacob. Verse 28. And the man said to Jacob, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Verse 29, then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said to him, why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Penuel, which means I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Verse 31, just as he had crossed over Penuel, the sun rose on him and he limped on his hip. Therefore, to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle that shrank, which is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle that shrank. But let me quickly read that verse again. Verse 27, and he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Now I want to speak about Jacob tonight. Like I said, this is my favorite Bible character. Now to understand the context of Jacob's life, you've got to go back in scripture to Genesis chapter 25. And you've got to go back right before even Jacob was born. The Bible says that Isaac married Rebekah and Rebekah struggled to fall pregnant. She was barren. Now, Isaac was the grandson. No, sorry. He was the son of Abraham, meaning that he would be the lineage of faith that would take over from Abraham. Abraham had a covenant with God and Isaac was to carry on with that covenant and pass that covenant Onto his children. His children would become a mighty nation. Descendants that would be set apart for God. Where the Messiah could come forth. The nation of Israel. So Isaac is second in line in this lineage of faith. But Rebecca is barren and she can't fall pregnant. The Bible says it's at this point that Isaac intercedes for his wife. He prays for his wife. God grants the request of Isaac. And Rebecca falls pregnant. Now, I just want to say there's no such thing as a perfect spouse. No such thing. 
But it's a good thing to have a praying spouse. So many people today are looking for the perfect one. I want to tell you, don't look for the perfect one. Look for a praying one. Look for someone that has a covenant with God. Somebody that walks with God. Somebody that has faith in God. Isaac was no perfect man, but he was a covenant man. He was a praying man. And because he prayed for his wife, God heard his prayer, granted his request, and she fell pregnant. Rebecca fell pregnant. She conceived and she was she was pregnant with purpose, with a lineage of faith. And what would come from her is the continuation of this covenant that was being passed down from Abraham through the bloodline. Now, the Bible says that there was something taking place on the inside of her, so much so that it disturbed her. And now she herself goes to God and she prays and she asks God, what is happening on the inside of me? What is this that's taking place on the inside of me? For there was a struggle taking place in the womb. And God gives her revelation, but also prophetic insight to what's taking place on the inside of her womb. God says to Rebecca, what is inside of you is two nations. And what would be separated from you are two people. And then God tells her prophetically that the older shall serve the younger. Sure enough, when the babies were born, there were twins within her womb and they came out. The Bible says that the firstborn came out and his name was Esau. He was red and hairy all over. The Bible says, in fact, he had so much hair as a baby, it looked like a hairy garment. Now, I'm a picture person, so... I can only imagine giving birth to a ratangarang. Imagine a, a little ratangarang coming out with a hairy garment. But the Bible says that's what Esau was when he came out. And as he came out, the Bible says, as he was being born, as he was coming out, Jacob, the next in line, the next born, the other twin in the womb, as he was coming out, he was holding on to the heel of Esau. So here comes Esau out and the second baby clutching on to the heel of Esau. Now the wrestling in the womb and the clutching on of the heel of Esau was a manifestation of what would take place in these boys' lives as they grew up. It would almost be prophetic what would take place in their lives. And this would be a picture of Jacob's life. More specifically, the Bible says, that Esau was born and then Jacob and they grew up under their parents. And Isaac loved Esau. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Jacob was somebody that was a mama's boy. But Esau, he was a dad's boy. He was somebody that loved the wild. He was somebody that loved to be in the wild. He was somebody that loved to hunt. While Jacob loved to stay in the tent with his mother, He'd love to cook. The Bible says one day while Esau was out hunting, he came back and he was tired and exhausted and he was hungry. And sure enough, there is Jacob busy making lentil soup. Esau asked Jacob, please give me some of that soup. And Jacob, being as clever as what he was, says to Esau, okay, if you want a bowl of this soup, then you have to give me your birthright. Now, I just want to give context to that. Esau had the birthright that was, to be, that was to go to him as a result of being the firstborn. Now, a birthright is defined as position or inheritance in the bloodline. The birthright is given to the firstborn son, which inherits the leadership of the family and also has authority from the father. Deuteronomy 21 verse 17 states that he's also entitled to a double portion of the father's inheritance. So Esau would eventually assume the leadership and authority of the bloodline. Not only that, he would get a double portion inheritance from Isaac, which was critical because Isaac 
was the son of Abraham, who was the father of faith. And Abraham had tremendous wealth that he passed over to Isaac. And Isaac had gathered a lot of wealth because God was with Isaac and he blessed Isaac. So in this context, it was important who was born first, who had the birthright. But Jacob is very sly and clever. He, in fact, he's shrewd and he sees an opportunity to get the birthright from Esau. And he says, unless you swear to me that you will give me your birthright, you cannot have a bowl of soup. Esau then concludes to himself that what good is the birthright if he's about to die from hunger? So he gives his birthright to Jacob and Jacob gives him a bowl of soup. And thus, the Bible says, Esau despised his birthright. Now, this whole story, the reason why I tell this, this explains the two characters of these two children, of these two men, sorry, of Jacob and Esau. Esau, his name means red. Esau is symbolic of the flesh and the fleshly ways of man. He is carnal in nature. You see, Esau was driven by his urges. And whenever you are driven by your urges or your flesh or what your flesh desires, you will always end up suffering in life. Not the suffering that God intends. You will suffer in life because you will not understand the will of God because you allow in the flesh to dominate you. So Esau is a picture of the flesh. He's a picture of the carnal nature of man. But Jacob, his name means Supplanter. Now, supplanter defined is the one that takes over or takes the place of someone else, usually on purpose. So Jacob, being clever, being shrewd, being sly, takes the birthright from Esau by giving him a bowl of soup while Esau was hungry and driven by the urge to eat. And Esau is a picture of the flesh. I want you to get this picture. Now, why would Esau give away his birthright? The only conclusion I have is that Esau must have banked on the fact that the blessing of the father that was to go to the firstborn, he would still receive the blessing because there was the birthright and there was the blessing. And if you could get the blessing from the father, regardless of the fact if you had the inheritance or not, you would be blessed. So Esau, he was waiting for the blessing, although he had given away his birthright to his brother. The Bible says that Isaac became old in age and Isaac one day called Esau in because he started going blind. He could not see. And he said to Esau, my son, the time has come that I must speak out my blessing over you. I want you to go hunt and I want you to go and make the stew that I so love, it was a meaty stew that Isaac loved, that Esau knew how to make. And his father gives him this instruction and he says, then bring it to me so that I may eat and so that I may speak a blessing over you. The Bible says that Esau went out from the presence of his father and he went to go and hunt so that he could hunt what he needed to hunt and bring in the meat and cook it and bring the stew to his father. But it's at this point that Rebecca overheard the conversation and she heard what Isaac said to Esau. So she goes to Jacob with a plan. She says, my son, I heard how your father was speaking to your brother that he's going to bless your brother. Now, I want you to get the blessing. So what I will do is I will make exactly that pot of stew that your brother's going to make. And then I'm going to give it to you and you go into the presence of your father and he will bless you. And Jacob, he, he's a little bit fearful and worried, worrisome. And he says, how can this be? Because I'm not hairy. I don't even sound like Esau. I don't even look like Esau. And if my father finds out that I'm not Esau and I'm busy tricking him, he will speak a curse over me. Rebecca says, then let that curse fall upon me. But she says, don't worry. I've got some of Esau's clothes here in the house. I will give them to you and I will take the skin of a goat. I will put it on you and you can go into the presence of your father. The Bible says that Rebecca made the stew. She gave it to Jacob. Jacob got dressed in Esau's clothes. He put on the skin of a goat. He was hairy on his arms and all around and he went into the presence of his father. 
as he came into the presence of his father, his father realized that that was too quick. And he calls out and he says, who are you? And Jacob answers and he says, I am Esau. Genesis chapter 27 verse 19. Now that is critical to the revelation that we're going to receive tonight. So I want you just to keep that on the side. Think about that. Just for a moment, I'm going to come back to it. The Bible says that Isaac was still not too sure, although he was blind. So what he did was he called Jacob forward. He touched Jacob and as he touched Jacob, he touched the hairy skin of the goat and he smelled the cloves of Esau. And then he concluded that it is Esau, although it sounds like Jacob. I'm telling you a whole long story to tell you how Jacob went to great lengths to deceive his father and rob his brother. The Bible says that Isaac ate the food and he spoke a blessing over Jacob that was supposed to go to Esau. Jacob goes out of the presence of Isaac. Sure enough, a time, a time passes on. Here comes Esau and he brings food to his father. And as he comes into the presence of his father, his father asks him, who are you? And he says, I'm Esau. And at that moment, Isaac realizes here is a problem. He has been deceived by Jacob. And all Isaac has is a curse to speak over Esau. Esau is infuriated by this. First, Jacob got and obtained his birthright. Now, he deceived his father to receive the blessing that was supposed to come to him. And Esau was angry. Esau was mad. In fact, he wanted to kill Jacob. But he just wanted, waited for his father to die. In fact, he said, the days of my fall, morning of my dad are near. Then I will take my revenge on Jacob. Rebecca realizes that Jacob is not in a good place. She realizes that his life might be in danger. And she goes to Isaac and asks Isaac to send Jacob away to a place called Haran, where her family comes from. Jacob is then sent to Haran. Now, Jacob leaves his father's house. Think about this. Jacob got what he wanted. He got the blessing and the birthright, but he's on the run. He's blessed, but on the run. He manipulated situations, but now he's on the run. And I want to tell you, whatever you manipulate, whatever you've got to push to happen, whenever you've got to push your agenda, it will never truly bring you the joy that you think it will bring you. It will never bring you the contentment that you truly think that you need. That's why we've got to be careful that we don't push our agenda or manipulate so that we can have our way in life. The Bible says that Jacob went to Haran and there as he came to Haran, he was at a well and he met young women as they were coming to draw water. And yeah, he meets Rachel. And Rachel was the daughter of Laban. Laban was the brother of Rachel, of Rebecca, sorry. And the Bible says that Jacob falls in love with Rachel. Eventually he meets Laban. Laban takes him in and Laban's a sheep farmer. So Jacob begins to farm with Laban. The Bible says that the love that Rachel and Jacob had was so intense that that Jacob wanted to marry Rachel. But Laban saw this as an opportunity for Jacob to work for him. So Laban says to him, you've got to work seven years to have my daughter's hand in marriage. The Bible says that Jacob worked for seven years, but those seven years were so short because he was so in love with Rachel. The Bible says after seven years when he was supposed to marry Rachel, on his wedding night, Laban gave him, Jacob, his other daughter, Leah. Now, Leah was not so beautiful as Rachel. In fact, she was not so good looking as Rachel. And I think Laban concluded that she will never be able to find a husband. So if he could give Leah to Jacob, then he would be he would have the assurance that there is a man for Leah. The next morning, and don't ask me how it happened, the next morning Jacob wakes up and he realizes that he married the wrong sister. From time to time, I will conduct wedding ceremonies and I will always ask the bridegroom jokingly, 
Are you sure this is the bride that you want to marry? Because Jacob was sure in the scripture and the next morning he woke up and it was the wrong wife. Laban deceives Jacob. Jacob is angry, goes to Laban. Laban says to him, okay, I did it. I admit it. But if you want Rachel, you've got to work another seven years. You can't get both daughters and only work seven years. You've got to now work 14 years. The Bible says that Jacob worked another seven years to have the hand of marriage of both daughters. But while Jacob is by Laban, he's there by Laban and he's blessed because God is with Jacob. And God is with Jacob and he blesses Jacob. But while Jacob is with Laban, Laban realizes that the hand of God is upon Jacob. But Laban is deceptive. And he's constantly messing Jacob around. In fact, he changes his salary 10 times. 10 times. That is not 10 times he got an increase. It was a pay that fluctuated. And out of frustration, after 20 years, Jacob decides he can't continue like this. He's working for his father-in-law, but he can't continue like this. He wants to leave. You see, Jacob, the one who deceived, now becomes deceived. First, he's deceived on his wedding night, and then he's deceived all the years that he's staying with his father-in-law. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. As a man reaps, he will reap what he sowed. In other words, you and I will constantly reap what we sow. If you're not happy with your harvest today, if you're not happy with the way that people treat you, then you have to go back and look at the seed that you have sown. Jacob sowed seeds of deception and later he himself was deceived as a result. Unless we go in repentance before God and ask God to forgive us, we will always reap what we sow. And that's why it's we've got to be so careful how we treat other people, how we handle other people, what we say and what we do, what's our approach in life. So now after all of this frustration, Jacob finally leaves Laban. And the Bible says as he moves away from Laban and he's on his journey, Jacob gets news that Esau is on his way to meet Jacob. Think about this. The last time Jacob saw Esau, 20 years earlier, Esau wanted to kill Jacob. Now, 20 years later, Esau is on his way to Jacob with a small army. And he's coming to meet Jacob. Messengers bring this message unto Jacob. And it strikes fear into his heart. The Bible says the night before he was supposed to meet Esau. He was at a place called the Yabok. And he, as he was there at the ford of the Yabok. It was a river. As he was there, a stream, a brook, so to speak. As he was there, the Bible says that night he could not sleep. He's busy plotting and planning what he needs to do because maybe this would be the last night that he is alive. He is scared. He is terrified. Who knows? His brother might attack him and not only him, but also wipe out his whole family. Because now he has got two wives, two female servants, 11 sons and one daughter. So you can imagine how terrified Jacob was. The Bible says he was busy moving everything and then he came to his tent in the middle of the night. And as he came to his tent, he was all alone. And while he was alone, here comes somebody, a man, to meet with Jacob. And the Bible says they begin to wrestle. And as they are wrestling, the wrestling match in that tent continued to such an extent that the man says to Jacob, let me go for day is breaking. And Jacob says something to him. He says, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And the man looks at Jacob and he asks him something. And he asks him something so critical. 
He says to him in verse 27 of Genesis chapter 32, Who are you? We come to know that this man that Jacob wrestled with was the angel of the Lord. It was God himself. And it wasn't that God was asking him what is his name because God is omniscient. He's ever knowing. He knows everything. But what was more of a request of who are you? What is your identity? This question was asked to Jacob 20 years earlier in Genesis chapter 27 verse 19. When Jacob came into the presence of his father as he was about to deceive his father and rob his brother of his blessing with that pot of stew. And his father said to him, who are you? And what did he answer? He said, I'm Esau. You see, Genesis chapter 32, when Jacob is at the Yabok, we read about a man that is coming to terms with who he is. It took 20 years for Jacob to realize that the problem in his life is not Esau. It's not anybody else. It's himself. Jacob came to a place where he admitted this is who I am. I'm a supplanter. I am a con man. I am somebody that deceives other people. I am somebody that does people in. This is who I am. I am Jacob. 20 years earlier, he was Esau. He was trying to be like Esau. He was dressed like Esau. He smelled like Esau. He was doing everything that Esau was doing. But it took him 20 years to realize he can't be Esau. He is Jacob. A lot of us look to other people or look to things to find contentment or to measure ourselves or to find identity. And I want to tell you, as long as you are looking to man, as long as you look into the things of this world to find identity, to find fulfillment, you will always be disappointment, disappointed. To Jacob. All his life, Esau was his measuring stick. Esau was his standard. He had to get what Esau had. And it took him 20 years to realize he was just chasing after the wind. Esau was never the problem. Jacob was the problem. Jacob was the problem. You see, in the womb, he wrestled with Esau. But now... As he has grown older and wiser and come to terms with himself, he wrestles with God. Before he was trying to fight for his father's blessing by even deceiving his father and robbing his brother. And now he fights for the blessing of God. There comes a place in your life, in my life, where we've got to stop fighting for the approval of people, the approval of man, and we've got to turn to God. Because that's where we will find contentment. That's where we will find joy. But that's also where we've got to come to the end of ourselves. Jacob is coming to the end of himself. Because your book, one of the definitions of your book, is an emptying of self. To empty of self. That's what your book means. Yeah, in the middle of the night, wrestling with God. Jacob realizes that if he goes out of the tent and he does not bless him, then how will he ever have the courage to face Esau? What good is it that he ever faces Esau? What good is it that he ever faces his fears? Where will he ever have the courage to face his fears, to persevere? I want to ask you today, while you're watching, or if you're watching at a later stage, how desperate are you that God will bless you? How desperate am I that God will bless me? God is seeking for a desperate people. Somebody that will say, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I will not let you go, God, until we see revival. I will not let you go until you move in my home. I will not let you go until I see breakthrough in my life. God, I'm going to hold on to you until I see the breakthrough, until you bless me. Are we prepared to wrestle with God, so to speak? Are we prepared to press into the things of God? 
Are we prepared to forsake the things of this world? Take our eyes off man and put our eyes on God. Are we prepared to empty ourselves so that God can fill us? When Jacob came to terms with who he is, and this is a picture of salvation. When we come to Jesus Christ, we have to confess who we are. That we are sinful, that we have sinned, that we have fallen short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Then we confess Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And we believe that he died on the cross so that we can have the free gift of salvation that is given through Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 9 verse 10. This is a picture of salvation. Sorry, Romans chapter 10 verse 9. This is a picture of salvation. The sinful man coming to God, repenting of his wicked ways, emptying himself and holding on to God so that God can bless him or her. The Bible says that God looked at Jacob and said these words. You will no longer be called Jacob, but you will be called Israel. Wow. Right there at the Yabok, at the place where Jacob empties himself, at the place where Jacob comes to terms with who he is and finally admits, this is who I am. I am the problem. God says, okay, now I'm ready to give you a brand new identity. I'm now ready to give you a brand new destiny. You are called Israel. And Israel means... The one who wrestles with God or triumphant with God. God gave the name Israel to Jacob at the Yabok. The place of the emptying of self. Jesus said in Luke chapter 9 verse 23. If you want to follow after me, you've got to take up your cross and you've got to deny yourself. I want to speak to you just for a few moments and then I'm going to close off in prayer. And I want to tell you, unless you come to the end of yourself and unless you realize that you've got to change, you will never get to the destiny that God has got in store for you. There are times in my life and they they still happen where I have to come to the yabok, so to speak, where I have to empty myself, where I have to admit this is who I am. I'm Jacob. And while I think Esau's the problem, Esau's not actually the problem. It's Jacob. And as I come to terms with Jacob, Israel can come forth. Inside of every Jacob, there's an Israel. Who is your Esau? What is your Esau? What is it that you think must change or who must change or who needs to come to you and be different towards you or apologize towards you? Who do you think? Who is your Esau? But I want to tell you, whoever is your Esau, whatever is your Esau, that's not the problem. The problem is Jacob. The problem in my life is Jacob. It's me. I have to come to terms with who I am. And when I'm willing to do that, and I'm willing to become desperate for God and empty myself, That's where God can give me a brand new identity. He can give me a brand new beginning. The Bible says we are new creations through Christ Jesus. We can only become new creations through Jesus Christ. But we have to be like John the Baptist in John chapter 3 verse 30. Where we say less of me and more of him. Jacob came on a place where he was so there was none of him. And God could fill him up. Who do you think needs to change in your life? Think about this. Maybe the real problem is not the Esau in your life. Maybe it's Jacob. If you want Israel to come forth. Then Jacob. Has to empty himself. So that Israel can come alive. The Bible says it was at this point. That the angel of the Lord touched the hip of Jacob and the socket came out of its place. And Jacob, he had a limp from that day forward. He had a limp. 
And Jacob realizes that he has seen God face to face. And he calls the place Penuel. The place where he emptied himself, the Yabok, now becomes Penuel. And Penuel means I have seen God face to face and he has kept me alive. He has persevered my life. You see, there was a belief in the Old Testament. If you saw God face to face, he is so holy and we are so sinful that we would die if we saw God's face. In fact, in Exodus chapter 33, verse 20, Moses requested to see God and God said, no one shall see me and live. In other words, if you had to see me, then you would die. So how is it that Jacob saw God and he did not die? He was dead to himself. He was dead to himself. Child of God, we have to die to ourselves. We have to die to our agenda. Maybe this, the greatest source of your frustration is not somebody else or not something else. But it's the fact that you've got these expectations that you have placed upon your life. And you've got these desires and this agenda. And now it's not coming to fruition. And you need to come to the end of yourself and you need to give it over to God. You need to empty yourself so that God can fill you. There's an Israel inside of you. There's an Israel inside of me. But the biggest blockage to Israel is not Esau. It's Jacob. The Bible says the next day with a limp, Jacob walked towards his brother. And he went and he met his brother. And it's an anticlimax because the Bible says they ran to each other. They grabbed one another and they cried and wept. But Jacob had now the courage to face his brother because he came to terms with who he is. And that's why I like Jacob. That's why he's my favorite Bible character is because I can relate to him. His life is relevant to my life. I can relate to this man. I know what it's like to mess up. I know what it's like not to have it all together. But Jacob gives me courage today. He gives me inspiration from the pages of scripture. If I can just come to the end of myself and if I can become desperate for God, God can give me a brand new beginning. God can turn the page and give me a brand new start. But it starts with me humbling myself before God. The Bible says, James chapter 4 verse 6, God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. That ego Inside of me had to die so many times and it's so subtle how it creeps back into my life. But me, the enemy in me has to die so that God can rule and reign through me so that Israel can come forth. I want to leave you with this thought today. Who is your Esau? Have you identified your Jacob? Have you come to terms with the person in the mirror? And once you come to terms with Jacob, Israel can come forth. Empty yourself so that God can fill you. God can use any vessel, but there's one vessel he cannot use. A full vessel. God will use an ugly vessel. He will use a vessel that doesn't even look pretty. He will even use a vessel that is cracked and even chipped. But God cannot use a full vessel. You will have to empty the vessel out to fill it up. And God will allow us to go through situations, allow us to go through circumstances. Although it might not be his best for us, he will allow it to happen so that we can come to the end of ourselves, so that we can go on our knees, repent and turn towards him. Every so often, God has to bring you and me to the Yabok. And there he has an encounter with us. There we wrestle with God. I want to leave you with that thought today. Come let us pray. Father God of our Lord Jesus Christ, as I come to you tonight with every single person that's watching right now and even at a later stage, I pray, Lord Father God, that you would help us to come to terms with Jacob. As we come to terms with Jacob and who Jacob is in our lives, Lord, give us the grace and the mercy Lord, to move in the opposite direction, the one direction that we were going in, to move in another direction. 
Help us to repent. Help us to change. Give us the mercy and the grace to change. So that we can fulfill the call of God upon our lives. So that we can do the will of God for our lives. I pray for every brother and sister that's watching right now. Lord, that you would comfort them. That you would counsel them by your precious Holy Spirit. But Lord, I pray, Lord, bring a conviction in their lives. Every single one of them, including me. To change. So that Israel can come forth. So that the destiny that God has planted on the inside of us can come to reality. Or can become a a reality in our lives. God, help us. As we come to the yabok of our lives. Help us, Lord, as we empty ourselves. Lord, fill us up with your plans and purposes and desires. So that we may do the will of God for our lives. I pray right now for every brother and sister that's watching, Lord, that you would bless them, that you would watch over them, that your grace would surround them like a shield. Lord, that your precious Holy Spirit would be with them right now. For those that have messed up, I pray, Lord, Father God, direct their hearts back to you. And Lord, as they seek you, as they repent, as they turn from their wicked ways, I pray, Lord, Father God, encounter them. Change their yabok to Penuel. Give them a brand new identity. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless every brother and sister that's watching right now. And I pray, Lord, that you would watch over them in this weekend to come. And I pray, Lord, that your presence would go before them. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to ask you something. If you want to come to the end of yourself... And you want to have Israel come forth. If you want to be that new creation I was speaking about a few moments ago. I want to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 9. If you confess with your lips and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. You will be saved. That's the only way to salvation. It's when you come to the end of yourself. When you realize it's not about you. It's all about him. I like to say, what I do does not define me, but what Jesus Christ does, did on the cross, that defines me. My identity is locked in the cross. And I'm not inviting you to a religion. That's not why Jesus died for us. In fact, he said in John chapter 10 verse 10, I have come so that you might have life and life in abundance. There is a life, an abundant life waiting for you. But it begins with receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I want to pray a prayer with you. If you say, Pastor, I want to make right with God. I want to come to terms with who Jacob is so that Israel can come forth. I want to to have that new birth experience. The new birth experience is found in John chapter 3. Where Jesus said to Nicodemus, unless you are born again, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. If you want to have an encounter with God, if you want to have a new birth where you become a new person, a new creation, where you have a new identity, it starts with confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So let me pray with you. I will lead you into prayer. You can repeat these words. And as you as you repeat these words, pray unto God. You're not praying unto me. Pray unto God. Come, let me lead you in this prayer. Just say, dear Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. I give you my life. I confess that I'm a sinner. And I confess that I need you as my savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I confess you died on the cross. I confess you rose from the grave. And I confess that you ascended on high. And I confess you seated on the right hand of the Father. Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my heart. Thank you for saving me. And I declare right now. I'm born again. I'm washed in the blood. Because I have confessed Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. If you prayed that prayer, I believe you've received the free gift of salvation. 
Salvation is a free gift, but now you have to renew your mind. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. You have to renew your mind so that you may know what the will of God is for your life, which is pleasing, perfect and good. And how do you do that? By spending time in God's word, by going to a good Bible based church, by listening to anointed preachers. By spending time worshiping God, listening to anointed worship music. If you are in a church, get planted and rooted in that church. Support that pastor. But if you mean what you prayed a moment ago, I believe that God is wanting to encounter you. It is in this time that you need to press in towards God. Empty yourself so that God can fill you. Well, that concludes my message that I have for today. I'm just going to greet everybody that's online. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Thank you if you've watched at a later stage. May God bless you. I am always so grateful and encouraged by every single person that takes the time to watch. God bless you. Okay, if you have not left me a comment, please drop a comment down below. I would like to greet you. It will be awesome to greet you. So, yeah, let me quickly see who's online. Lisa Kriya, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. It's so good to see that you are online, my sister. And Jody Kriya, your husband. Uh, may God bless you, Cody and Philip. Uh, may God bless the whole Kriya family. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch. Mari de Beer, bye. Thank you that you had the time to to see. May the Lord you rightly see. I pray that the word has you inspired and you bemoedig. Stie groete for your kinders. And mag die Heere jou reiklik sien. Vicky Duplessis, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. May God bless you. I trust that you are doing well. And I trust that you are encouraged and strengthened. May you have a wonderful evening. And may God bless you. Tasha de Toy, may ma, mag die Heere jou reiklik sien. Baie dankie dat jy die tyd gevat het om te kyk. Baie dankie dat jy so getrouw is om te kyk. Stie groete vir JC en mag die Heere jou reiklik sien. Elme Badenos, baie dankie dat jy die tyd gevat het om te kyk. Mag die Heere jou reiklik sien. Ek vertrou dit gaan goed met jou en ek vertrou dat jy is geseend. Tasha Greef, baie dankie dat jy die tyd gevat het om te kyk. Mag die Heere jou reiklik sien. Ek vertrou dit gaan goed met jou en ek sien jylle hierdie sondag in die kerk. Apostle Hans Blunk, thank you very much for taking the time to watch. I trust that you have recovered well. I trust that you are on the road to a speedy recovery and that you are feeling better and that you are encouraged. May God bless you and you are an inspiration to us all. Kaylin Melanda, anointed future pastor of the kingdom of God. Thank you for taking the time to watch. You are a blessing. May God bless you. I trust it's going well with you. Remember, your grandfather is always in my prayers. You and your family are in my prayers. And may you have a wonderful evening. Elizabeth, it is so good to see that you look. May the Lord you rightly see. I trust that the word has met you. And I trust that you are blessed for now. Nicolene Williams, bye. Thank you that you have the time to see. May God bless you, May God bless you, Nicolene. It's so good to see that you're online. And may you have a blessed weekend ahead. May God's presence go before you, Nicolene Williams. Let me just go through here. Jeanette Fouchier, baie dankie dat jy die tyd gevat het om te kyk. Mag die Heere jou reiklik sien. Ek vertrou dat gaan goed met jou en jou man, stie groete vir jou man. En mag jy net a geseende naweek hee. God bless you. Frik van Vieren, skoon pa, baie dankie dat jy die tyd gevat het om te kyk. Mag die Heere jou reiklik seen. Ek vertrou dit gaan goed met jou en dat jy geseend is. En mag jy net een wonnelike nacht hee. God bless. Zia Gina, thank you very much for taking the time to watch. I trust that you are blessed. I trust that you are encouraged by the word. May you have a wonderful evening. Love you very much. And thank you for always being so faithful to watch. God bless you. Sean Amos, my brother, it's so good to see that you're online. Thank you for taking the time to watch. God bless you, my brother. I trust it's going well with you. Nadine Lowe, 
Whoops. Okay, you've just seen how the other side of my sitting room looks. It's a little pink castle. That's my daughters. They play in there. So by accident, I switched camera. Nadine Lowe, trust that it's going well with you and Colin. I trust that you guys are blessed. I trust that you had a wonderful week. And it's so good to see that you're online. God bless you. David and Annelies Pretorius, baie dankie dat jy die tyd gevat het om te kyk, mag die Heere jou reiklik sien. Ek vertrou dit gaan goed met jylle. En ja, ek sien jylle binnenkort. God bless. Moussia Piet, thank you very much for taking the time to watch my brother. May you have a blessed evening. God bless you. And that is it. Thank you so much for everyone that took the time to watch. It's so good to see that everybody's online. Thank you very much. Um, yes, and remember every Thursday night we're going to have our live services. That's just enough time between the Sunday services um, so that word can go out. I want to do it more in the middle of the week. I was doing it every Tuesday night. But we had outreaches on Thursday night, so our outreaches moved to Friday nights. It gave me an opportunity to do it again on a Thursday night. So yes, um, please stay tuned every Thursday night at seven o'clock. And remember, this Sunday morning on this Sunday morning, I'm going on with the miracles of Jesus. Um, I've got a power-packed word for you this Sunday. Please. Look on our Facebook page. There's going to be so much revelation in the word that I give this week. Yolani Boota, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. God bless you. Awesome. It's so good to see everybody that's online. But anyway, may you have a lovely evening. May God bless you. If you are watching at a later stage, may you just be blessed in everything that you do as you put God first place. Because when you put God first, you will be blessed. Thank you very much. This is Pastor Dominic. I'm signing out. Have a lovely evening. God bless.